Hey, welcome to Crossover Event. And man, do we have some events for you this time. Wow, uh, the new Spider-Man trailer. Everybody's talking about it. We got some thoughts on that, do we not, Chris? Yeah, I don't think everybody got exactly what they were hoping to see in it, but wow, there is a lot to talk about. Uh, what, what else? What more could you want? Also, uh, the MCU has told us what they're releasing in the next couple years, and it is a lot. We're going to cover as much of it as we can. So much to talk about. Yeah, just the Disney Plus stuff alone, which is what we're discussing, mm -hmm. is like, wow, this is a lot. Of course, no release dates, but hey. Hey, just even knowing it's coming, it's like Christmas came early. Can't, hey, can't have everything. Join us. <laughs> Okay, I'm not going to lie. Um, I resisted this for the longest time, but after the last four MCU movies, I've been f experiencing superhero movie fatigue, to be honest. I mean, they've been good and sort of okay. Um, this trailer has me super excited. Well, I think both of us, Martin, Thomas, and I here, we both have said for years Spider-Man is our favorite superhero. Sure. Like, love him. Doesn't always live up to our expectations in the cinematic form, but even the last two Marvel films, I would say, didn't really completely, oh, I know for you even more so, didn't match what we were hoping for. Well, you know, uh, the uh, Far From Home, I, I didn't like so much, but the Homecoming, I was absolutely in love with. Uh, it, it delivered on, I guess, the things that the, the last few movies didn't. But now, uh, with this one, They've opened the door to so much, and especially bringing in Doctor Strange, uh, the the other goateed superhero, to fill in for Peter Parker's uh, mentor. <laughs> it was pretty exciting. That, huh? yeah. No, 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 no. He's it's what it was thing for goateed older. Well, man. that's why I thought it was funny that that when him and Tony Stark meet, they don't like each other. <laughs> it's like, wait, what happened to facial hair, bros? Uh, Is that a thing? Oh, yeah, you know, it's a thing. It, it, actually, it's a thing they did in the comics, <laughs> and you can look it up. Um, <laughs> but man, you watch this trailer and it just gives you everything imaginable, like something from all of the movies. And you got multiple versions of some characters. Uh, Green Goblin? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, uh, Willem Dafoe. He, he, just hearing Willem Dafoe's laugh is enough to get me going with this. And Dr. Octopus, um, the moment where he goes, wait, you're not Peter. I'm like, oh. What's going to happen now? <laughs> and the different Spider-Man and the Spider-Man in the black suit who's suddenly using Doctor Strange's magic. Um, I'm thinking this is an alternate version. Who uh, He's like, hey, I'm hacking this. You know, we all know that Marvel's going into the multiverse. And the last trailer made clear that, yes, Peter goes in and goes, hey, you know that whole thing where everyone in the world knows who I am now and a lot of them are really mad and they will put me on trial for murder? That sucks. Doctor Strange, you're the... I, I don't know a lot of guys I've got their phone number for, mm -hmm. or at the very least their address. I mean, sure. Strange's big downside is that everyone knows where he lives. He right? lives on Bleecker Street. He lives on Bleecker Street, <laughs> right? It just doesn't knock. Easy. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> just keep banging until he answers. Jeez, I didn't order food. But he goes, can you please help me? You've got the magical, timey whiny stuff. And Doctor Strange, okay, sure. For whatever reasons, he agrees to sure. help him. Sure, sure. It went goes wrong saying, don't it, do it. It like, goes wrong. Whatever. There's a thing towards the end of this trailer where he's and they set it up because at the end of the trailer is if it feels like oh this is going to be a third act thing but I suspect it's not I suspect it's a first act thing of like they're coming through with big purple threads through the sky and I think that's going to be the point where they're like okay what's coming through is all these universes crushing together because we are seeing characters and actors who have been in previous Spider-Man films True. outside of this continuity True. crushing together True. it's the Marvel Final Crisis but all starting at least in the movies on this particular movie, which will be going through phase four. And I like that, yeah, they've got William Defoe mm -hmm. as the Green Goblin. Mm -hmm. They've got Thomas Hayden Church as the Sandman. Sandman got yeah. Reese Ethans as the Lizard. Yes. They've got, uh, uh, the, what's his name, Doc Ock. Uh, uh, oh, Alfred Molina. Alfred Molina, yeah, who yeah. obviously is going to be one of the primary guys in here because this trailer sets him up to be first like, ah, Peter, I'm going to kill you, and then gets his mask off and goes, wait a minute, you're not Peter. <laughs> you're not Peter. Get and, out of here. And then a little later, it's like all three of the main kid characters in his lair just chill not talking to him and even like 
Kind of dunk it on his name. Dunk it on his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so are they teaming up with Doc Ock? Is that what's going on? Well, in he this is thing? a scientist. He is a scientist, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Although I, this is involves magic, so I don't know. Now you might watch this trailer and go, hmm. Conspicuously absent is Tobey Maguire and a Andrew Garfield, who we saw in the leaked photo. However, people have gone through and analyzed the big matchup with all the Spider-Man villains coming at Spider-Man. And noticed how the lizard is attacking someone who's not there. Off screen. Yeah. Yes, yes. So the theory is that the two, the RR, the two Spider-Men have been digitally edited out of the trailer. Which is a thing Marvel does. I, I heard he's actually attacking Buzzsaw. So. Buzzsaw. <laughs> no, now, now my, my big question is, which Venom are we going to get? Oh, yeah. Because yeah, uh, we've seen all the villains from the previous Spider-Man mm -hmm. films, except for... The previous Venom. Yes. And the last Venom film established, okay, now he's crossed over. The question is, are we going to get Venom at all? And one would think if we're going to get Venom in a Spider-Man film that this is the, or in the MCU, this is where they're going to shove him in there. And they're kind of keeping it. I don't know why they would at this I point mean, keep it I mean, I personally, back. I'd rather see the Spider-Man 3 Venom just because he was an actual threat to Spider-Man. Hmm. But, you know, business being what it is and, and Sony trying to launch a whole new line, it would probably be the Tom Hardy Venom. I, I would, would kind of like to see, like, you know, bad Venom from the previous Spider-Man 3 come in, attacking Spider-Man, then Tom Hardy Venom going, hey, bro, that's my shtick. You don't get to do that. And oh. then it's Venom versus Oh, you Venom. know what? You know what? That'd be a great way to bring him in and make him that hero that he keeps saying, telling us he is, but not showing yeah, us like that, that Like, you know, the Punisher level or the later years Venom level yes. guy who's like, Spider-Man going, fine, I'll work with you. Yes, I've like murdered you. several people, but, but I'm know. popular, so they're making me an anti-hero now. <laughs> <laughs> Are you happy? There are also reports in the trailer that people micro-analyzing it have seen that it looks like Goblin has two different looks in it, which Ooh. suggests... Dane DeHaan. Dane DeHaan appearing the, in this the, as well. the Green Goblin that no one liked. And also, I'm curious about the black and gold uniform Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. The assumption is, oh, Peter gets a new suit, as... Peter often does, but are we sure that's not just one of these other I, alternate? I think I think it's an alternate. I think it's I think it's one of the alternates who who says there's no way I'm going back, and I know how because you see him doing this. He's like he's hacking the system. I I, I think he's got to figure it out, dude. I he's wish, gonna be the real threat. I wish they would introduce the my favorite the Spider Man Spider Man character who literally is Peter Parker fell in a vat full of spiders was devoured by them <laughs> oh, the and by that Spider Man is just an assemblage of spiders in human form. Oh my god, I love it. It's like the Lovecraft Spider Man. I love it so much. Okay, I'm not familiar with that, but it sounds awesome. Oh yeah, that should totally happen. But like this is clearly them going, wow, that animated film sure was popular. Yeah, that animated <laughs> film was popular and um. This deal we got with Sony, uh, we don't know who we're dealing with. So if this is the last Spider-Man we got to make, we're going to pour in everything we got. Oh, the deal may go on, though. There, there, you know, we'll see. Yeah, man, may or may hey, not. You're not <laughs> throwing money out, out, outside of the room here, you know, either Sony or Marvel. Like, they, Marvel really wants to keep doing Spider-Man. Sure they do. Sure they do. But, yeah. like, Peter made a deal with Mephisto. Marvel has made a deal with Sony. Did he, though? <laughs> did he, though? And you know he did. Uh, uh, we don't like it, but he did. Uh, Hi everyone, welcome to the Danny Danger program. It's all Danny Danger, all the time. I'm so happy to have you here. Today we're going to be talking- Hey, hey, hey what's, what's going on? on? How the hell oh, are you over what, here? What is this? Oh, hey guys, come on. Hey, hey. did you pull yeah. this again? Oh. Yeah, I didn't know you guys were coming you. here. I, I, it was only a matter of time before okay. this happened. <laughs> awkward. Disney Plus Day gave us a bunch of really great announcements for Marvel's upcoming slot of shows. Um, the first one being uh, Spider-Man. Oh my God. Freshman, Freshman year. year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, they're all high school. They're all I'm like, So Spider-Man freshman year, which will be really great because I think it'll be a, like a younger, sort of cuter Spider-Man. I love, like there can never be too many animated Spider-Man shows. Like... I binge watch all the time Ultimate Spider-Man because it's still like so, so good. Um, so anytime you tell me there's going to be like a new Spider-Man animated series, and especially something that focuses on a little bit younger of an age group, I think is 
is going to be a lot of fun, and I'm really excited. Well, I know back in the day, our big thing was a uh, 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 spectacular, spectacular Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. I was about to say, hey, Martin, what's the best animated Spider-Man? I know, I know, because I was like, we had to go back to the song, <laughs> Spectacular, Spectacular Spider-Man. Uh, that was the best uh, cartoon, and it ended way too soon, like two seasons, and they cut it off. So I'm always waiting for like, hey, pick that back up again. Yeah. And this sounds exciting, because it's Spider-Man, I guess, before Tony Stark comes in? Yeah, it's his, his fresh. It's, you know, the movies go... Nobody wants to see the whole origin story again. Nobody wants to see that again. And uh, so we didn't. And now this is a presumably we're going to get yeah, to see. I, I initially agreed, and then, then I became like, no, without the death of Uncle Ben, this character doesn't have his meaning. So bring it on. I don't know. I think we all know about the death of It's like, do you really want to see the pearls drop for Batman one more That's time? That's happened a lot more than yeah. Uncle Ben's death. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think for the live action that it's necessary to see the mm-hmm. whole rigmarole again. But for an animated series to explore it is fascinating to me also because it's clearly going to be geared towards kids. And you don't really see a lot of kids' cartoons that are like, hey kids, let's talk about death. That's true. But, you know, as we were saying, Spectacular Spider-Man, I kept thinking about that and going, yes, of course, this has got to stay with me in MCU. I guess spider Man's one of their big, you know, cash sure, cows. But sure, at the sure. same time, given what the next thing we're going to talk about of their shows, why couldn't they have just made the Spectacular Spider-Man go on? And that's going to be... X-Men 97, which is a continuation of the classic 90s X-Men series, which is often thought by animation superhero fans of being the best animated superhero show ever now yes i watched all but as it was coming out and the animation is you know hey but, hey, but what it was listen and ba- back at that time batman the animated series was the gold standard mm-hmm. uh and so you couldn't always get gold but it's silver was x-men and spider-man yeah absolutely yep. and, and and that x-men cartoon was a lot of people's introduction to the x-men they didn't know who they were uh, they didn't realize all, all those stories were taken from comics before. And so everything they know comes from those that, that series. Oh, yeah. And it was really kind of closely following the actual yes, comic canon, which yeah. is shocking. It even ended where they've said is where it's picking up, which is Professor X has been grievously injured and the X-Men, they don't know what to do. So they reach out to Magneto, their greatest arch enemy, for help, who agrees to help them because, you know, down deep below, he cares for Professor X. They used to Except be really when he good friends. Except for when he does it. Well, you know, it's like in a, you know, it's a, they, they don't disagree on a basic tenet, you know. But, and then uh, Lilandra appears and takes him off to the, Professor X off to the Shi'ar homeworld. And it ends with the X-Men and Magneto together, which is definitely where the comics went. Mm-hmm. Picking up from there, that's exciting to a lot of people. We've never seen a filmed version of this particular aspect, the, the X-Men, which is still like, what, that's like 30 years ago now. But Sure, you know, yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. But either way, they are bringing back the bulk of the voice cast for this, which I think is really, really going to be exciting as hell. There are some new people that are coming into this uh, because some people are just not going to be available, but they're not going with celebrity voices. They're going with professional voice actors on this, and I think that's cool as well. And it's being show run by the guy who just recently did that Witcher animated series for Netflix, which actually was pretty well received. I'm insanely pumped because, of course, like I grew up on this cartoon. And also I think it's it's um, impactful for a lot of like, you know, feminine people because it was one of the few cartoons where you had like uh, an ensemble cast of like equal parts male characters and mm-hmm. female characters mm-hmm. and like the same number of like, um, you know, female uh, superheroes. Like a lot of times, Batman the Animated Series is great, but most of the women that we have to look up to in that show are evil, which, are, is also lovable, but different. <laughs> um, and so, like, I just remember, like, so I, I remember that if you were a little girl in that time and you wanted to play superheroes, you could play X Men. And it was just, like, so revolutionary and impactful and still, like, makes an impression on me. It's why the reason why I'm so obsessed with Storm is from that show. No, no, that, that was the, the, the big thing about the X Men when they became the new X Men. Was it wasn't just like, hey, we're bringing in international uh, superheroes, but it was like, hey, this is really the, the the book for superheroes of the maybe the distant franchise who weren't elsewhere. And yes, you're right, strong female cast. Uh, Storm is one of the best characters. Like when I play any of the Marvel games, I always choose Storm because she has the best power set. I like Mohawk Storm. Oh. Yeah, give us Mohawk Storm Mohawk in Storm. 97. Please, please, please. That would be so amazing. Like, hello, kitten. So, uh, WandaVision ends, and we're left with what is the fate of Agatha, Agatha Harkness, 
the breakout character from that series. With uh, a series that had a lot going for it. So we can, next coming up on Disney Plus is going to be House of Harkness, well, or Agatha House of Harkness, where we get to see what happens with her, or maybe even a prequel. Uh, it's interesting because Catherine Hahn completely stole the show, and the whole segment they did using the Munsters theme <laughs> ha had everybody who was like, I think I like this show going like, oh, I love this show. So the idea of her getting a spinoff has people excited just not even knowing what it's about. And we don't even have a lot of details about it. Just that they thought about having her try to steal Wanda's power to resurrect her mother and then abandoned it. Uh, you know, maybe it would have been too much of a detour, possibly. Also, they were dealing with COVID while they were shooting that. So now here's a full chance to explore that. Um, something I thought was interesting was how they made her a villain in the series where Agatha Harkness has always been a witch for good uh, as the babysitter for the Fantastic Four and even a mentor for Wanda. So I'm thinking this series is going to be about her being chaotic, but ultimately her redemption. Yeah, I think her redemption arc is what we're looking at. But I also wouldn't be surprised to see if they go with some of the prequel stuff here because we saw that she goes all the way back to the Salem Witch Trials. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be shocked at all if we get a lot of flashbacks in her over the ages and doing her Agatha thing. Well, and I think that was one of the biggest questions that, you know, people walked away from WandaVision with. It's like, okay, but why? Why did she do this? What are the details of this? And we have sort of an idea, but there's a big time jump in between when she takes the powers from her coven and when she finds Wanda. And there's so much that probably has happened in that period of time to explain why she's so hell-bent on getting a hold of Wanda's powers or harnessing that power that Wanda has. And so I'm very much looking forward to the spooky Catherine Hahn uh, well, comedy hour. And that's the thing that if you've learned nothing from the TV show Lost is you don't count somebody as evil until you see their whole story. Because they can all the writers can always go back and go like, well, yeah, they did that, and that was kind of dickish, but look what happened before. What and now is you, evil, really? Plus, I mean, once we see how out of control Wanda can be, you're like, eh, maybe she had a point. I, almost every superhero has made some bad decisions along the way. Mm -hmm. I mean, the aforementioned Mephisto Spider-Man <laughs> just saying, oh, wait, no, it, that's the it's executive. Okay. It's okay. Uh, it's that's, okay. That's the we head can, producer we, of Marvel we, we, Comics. We, we can let that idea. go now. No. Well, can we? <laughs> so, but if, if there's been a lot of rumors circulating around the idea that like Wanda's next appearance will be her as sort of like the the villain or the mm -hmm. or the bad guy, and and when you're talking about like putting her up against someone like Doctor Strange, like Doctor Strange is going to need as much help as anybody fighting against Wanda is going to need as much help as possible, and I think that the show might be setting her up, Agatha, in a way up to sort of be that that force that maybe helps to fight Wanda or. Uh, what I hope is to that force that like helps pull Wanda back from the edge and say right, like right, I'm right. sorry I did this to you this is my redemption arc of saving the world from you and from this emotional turmoil that I caused and let's hold hands and sing kumbaya and it's gonna be beautiful I want them to hug which is odd because the ending of WandaVision more presages the House of M miniseries than it does what they seem to be doing with the parallel universes which maybe that's phase five I, I can they know. House of M without mutants though I mean, mutants are coming, Danny. I know they are. Yeah, they keep saying that, but then they give. But us, I'll believe they, it when they, it's in. They, they say mutants are coming, but they go like, "Oh, but but here's Inhumans. Oh, but here's Eternals." <laughs> they so haven't even given us where's Inhumans. In, where's mutants? They've just given us Ms. Marvel. Yes, mm. and miracles. And speaking of maybe Inhumans, uh, we did get a nice little teaser trailer for the upcoming Ms. Marvel production, which was supposed to come out at the end of this year, but obviously. The world happened and it's coming out next year um but i am so thrilled and there's a lot of questions about like whether or not kamala's uh you know joining the mcu will signify the rise of inhumans or if her powers are explained by a latent x gene um so we're, we're really getting into those stories where we are it's it's hard for us not to speculate about introducing new corners of the marvel universe because otherwise how else is she going to get her powers well i tell you just the little bit i read because they don't have a lot of details but it didn't sound like they were going with her being an inhuman yeah it, yeah. it sounded like they're, they're doing something alternate because you got to figure at this point inhuman is going to be you know box office poison or it's just something yeah. when people hear read read or hear that they might go like nah pass 
And it's a perfect opportunity to just do something completely different. Yeah, Inhuman is code in the MCU now for, oops, yeah. we don't like to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> and that was Anson Mount, for God's sakes. How would that fail? Well, well it's he, the only MCU he, thing he, he I can't, haven't seen. He can't do everything. It's like <laughs> a quarterback who has no offensive line. <laughs> but I suspect, and this is just me guessing right now, mm -hmm. that maybe this is going to be the one where they tease the beginning of the, the mutants, mutants and the X-Men. It's the perfect time to I, do I, it. I, if there was ever a time to really bring mm -hmm. this into here, mm -hmm. it would be right now Introduce the concept. for this. Although there's nothing like that specifically on paper that we have to go with, right, there right. are a couple other side characters here, like Red Dagger, who in the comics is a friend of the family, but who lives in Pakistan with a family home there, who will be introduced as a character, or at least that person, and I presume they're not living in Pakistan in this particular version. And then there's another guy who's like another inhuman in the comics who is... Uh, can use bioluminescence to blow shit up. I'm not sure why bioluminescence blows shit up. Yeah, it seems like it would just like make it glow. Yeah, like like, like oh, I can see it now. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he's so, the cleric of the party. So okay, so Miss Marvel, she's getting introduced in the in the next Captain Marvel movie, if I'm not correct. She, uh, she will be appearing in Marvels, but I believe this it, is her introduction. Yes. Oh, okay, okay, she's yeah. getting introduced in the TV. And I show. and I do think that her power source, in addition to possibly having something to do with a latent X gene will be will be a little more closely tied to Carol's mm -hmm. story because mm -hmm. like Monica's story there's been some implications in WandaVision that like she was only able to travel through that hex grid the hex grid because she already had some latent powers that okay. were maybe attached to her relationship with Carol growing mm -hmm. up um, and we don't really know a lot about that but I have a feeling especially when you look at like clips of uh, you know uh, Kamala getting her powers and pictures of Monica and pictures of uh, Carol, you see a lot of similarities in how like the power is sort of represented artistically. Sure, sure. Um, and so it makes sense for all of them to have like a similar um, a similar origin story or, or coming into power story that kind of comes all together in the Marvel. Okay. So I'm really excited for that. Um, if this is a latent X gene story, um, I'm gonna need them to do the Wolverine Kamala uh, <laughs> Friendship. Wolverine yeah. is friends well, with an awful powers. lot of teenage girls. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he does. If there's a teenage girl, a new teenage girl on the team, he Every takes time. them under his wing. Yeah. Another really great show that they just gave us a little teaser image for is going to be the Echo Show, uh, which I'm really stoked about and, and glad that I was very surprised that they were already announcing that from the get go, especially mm -hmm. since. We haven't yet seen her character appear in Hawkeye. Some of us haven't yet seen her character yeah. appear in Hawkeye. Yeah. Um, but I'm super pumped because to me, this is all but like straight up confirmation that they are bringing in um, the Netflix, uh, the the Netflix MCU. So like you know Charlie Cox's Daredevil, uh, Vin Vince Vaughn as, as Wilson Vince Fisk, Vincent Vince D'Onofrio. Yeah. Oh my God, Vince Vaughn! I mean, Vince Vaughn that could would probably be do so it. I would watch that. He absolutely I watch that. could. I would watch that. <laughs> Absolutely could, um, but Vincent D'Onofrio yeah, yeah. as, uh, as the like his incredible transformation into Wilson Fisk mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. is like um, you know like award worthy performance. Well, I think we should slow down because yeah. they keep saying no, we're not bringing in the Netflix. They are characters. liars. I know they lie all the time. <laughs> they have confirmed but, but, but Charlie there's, Cox. There's, there's been con confirmation of Charlie Cox having at least a scene in the new Spider Man movie, and 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 they already and they said he was he would be uh, Matt Murdock. In the She-Hulk series, yep. yeah, that so that does open the door, and it was that thing of like, all right, okay, we get that you're gonna kill off and not acknowledge the the Netflix heroes, but come on, Daredevil, <laughs> yeah. everybody liked that. Hey, that so worked. We all agreed uh, on Daredevil. I think like at least in the first season, we all agreed on Jessica Jones, and God, I love Jessica Jones. I wish they'd bring her and, and the Purple and, Man and, and Mike Coulter. You know, Mike Coulter? Luke Cage. I mean, the, the he, series were mixed, but he was great. Yeah, he was you great. Know? Yeah, like, I, I can't think no anybody else is Luke Cage. Like, yeah, no yeah, yeah. That 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 would that's yeah. what it came down to. But Echo is a character who is deaf. But uh, like she's like Daredevil in reverse, except she can't hear. Yeah, she, except she can't hear. Instead, of can't see. But she can mimic people's movements and mm -hmm. what have you. She's kind of a taskmaster type of mimic, I guess. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And here it seems like they're sort of transmuting what's going on in the comics. See, this is where I disagree with you, Danny, because you're assuming they're bringing in the Kingpin as she is part of the comics. I think that that's not what they're going to do. I think that like in the comics, Kingpin has her set up believing that Daredevil killed her father when in mm -hmm. fact it was Kingpin. I think they're going to twist it here where she thinks Hawkeye killed her father, but 
it's not Kingpin, it's somebody else entirely. And God knows there's lots of villains. When we see her in the series, reportedly, she appears as a member of the Tracksuit Mafia, sort of a, yeah. you know, a second-tier gang-level leader. So Yeah, yeah, she's kind of a, she's the boss of the, of the Tracksuit Mafia. But if, if what you're saying is true, and that does make sense, then he's got her trying to kill him, as well as White Widow. That, which you know, hey, that that makes for a good story because it's it's funny in, in the Hawkeye, he he just wants to get back to his family, but he has all this other shit he has to deal with it's, because of uh, Kate Bishop. Yeah, and it's Christmas time. Why mm-hmm. didn't Shane Black direct this? I'm just saying. <laughs> Sinbad. He just wants to get the most popular toy for his kids, but stupid Sinbad keeps getting in the way and, and stopping it in his tracksuit. That's what happens, right? That's my biggest hope. My biggest hope for this now, the phase four with the multiverse, is that at some point the Sinbad movie is like playing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Look at the Sinbad yeah. Genie movie. Yeah. I want to they got to stick it in the background. <laughs> so a long time ago in Marvel Comics, there was this spin-off bit they did called Ultimate Comics that was like, ooh, it's like a parallel universe for Marvel, but much more dark and grim. Well, except for Ultimate Spider-Man, which was like, you know, one yeah. of the best comics Marvel ever made. Sure, sure. But they also did this book called Ultimate Fantastic Four, which started super strong, didn't keep as super strong as it went, but it did do this remarkable thing for them, which is introducing Marvel Zombies, which is a parallel universe where they, you know, Reed, of course, goes, let's just open this wormhole. What's the worst that can happen? And there's a world where the zombie virus broke out and a lot of the superheroes became zombies. Yada, yada. Well, Marvel went, that's great. We're just going to take that one thing and we're going to do this. So this new animated show, which of course we saw introduced in the What If series, yes. starts from that. The original books were written by Robert Kirkman and I know they weren't to everybody's taste, but they sure were to mine. I love horror. I love zombies. It, they, I love Marvel. It was a fun thing in, in the beginning. It, it, you know, it was, it, it was almost like a, like yeah. a joke, like a novelty. And it's not like you walk out, open the pages and be like, oh, that's an unpleasant surprise. Yeah, like, yeah, you know what yeah. you're walking into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to go through it. It was fun. And then you're like, okay, that was cool. I, I, I like that. And wait, you, you, you're doing more? You, you, you won't stop making them? They will not stop. Of course. This is um, how it goes with zombies. People love mm-hmm. zombies, man. How many seasons of The Walking Dead? And now multiple spinoffs. There's a new spinoff on the way, too, by the way, in case you didn't Are know. Are you serious? Yes. It's never, it's never going to uh-huh. stop. Yeah, they, There's supposedly a series of like four movies with Andrew Lincoln's character coming back. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah, matter. It doesn't. The point is, Marvel Zombies, when we see it in the what if, that world has been, I mean, it's over. For that yeah, world, yeah. right? So either this is going to be a prequel to that story, or it's going to be some variation on that story, like another world with zombies. But it has been a fun story in the comics, and I kind of look forward to seeing what they do with this. Although prepare because you know characters are gonna die. That's how this works. No, that's what makes it fun. Yeah. And you, I mean, with zombies, you can kill the characters, and then they're not dead, and they're not really dead. Yeah, or they just are or they're undead. More hungry for brains, yeah. but they still like Spider Man is still doing his shtick, but he's like brains. <laughs> So is he Stephen Grant, the cab driver, or Mark Spector, the mercenary, or Moon Knight, the knight, the, the, the hand of Khonshu, the Egyptian god? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Uh, one of the Disney Plus shows that I'm excited about that I normally would not have been is Moon Knight, which is going to star Oscar Isaac, who has, in the last year, become my favorite actor. Uh, this guy is so intense, even when it doesn't even call for it. And of course with this, he's doing all the training and he's playing a superhero who is similar to Batman, except where you go like, well, Batman's a little nuts. No, Moon Knight is actually does have disassociative identity disorder. Yeah, confirmed by Kevin Feige for the record. Oh yeah, yeah. And in his initial uh, outing, he had the three personalities I mentioned, but then in a later incarnation, he has the personalities of all the Avengers that he switches out of, where sometimes he thinks he's Captain America, and sometimes he thinks he's he's uh, Wolverine uh, or any other other Avengers. But I believe, from what we've seen with this series, it's going to go more into Egyptology. It, they are comparing it to Indiana Jones. Yeah, the director is uh, is from Egypt and has mm-hmm. and talks about like how that's a big influence, and I love that because I'm always worried if we're pulling from the mythology from another country or people, are we like doing that in a respectful way? Are we grave robbers doing a story about grave robbers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's, I'm very excited. And I think that they're going to treat the DID with a lot of respect mm-hmm. and, uh, and care as well, which was a big deal for me. And four of the six episodes are by that Egyptian director. Who's a big deal in Egypt, apparently, but this is his first English language, mm-hmm. language project. But the other two are by Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead are two of the best horror directors in the whole world. Oh, who I'm, 
I love the pieces of their movies, The Endless and Synchronic okay. and, and Spring. They're so good. And years ago at a festival, I was hanging out with them and I said, you know what? If y'all ever get big, you know what MCU film y'all be great for? Just guess. What was it, man? What, what, what film did I say they'd be great for? I don't, I don't know. You dropped some names down here. Oh, I'm God trying to damn. pick them up. <laughs> Marvel also announced that they are doing their, they showed us a little preview of the new She-Hulk series. It's going to be 10 episodes. It's going to be like a legal comedy, uh, which sounds really amazing. And so I'm good. so excited. Um, I'm obsessed with She-Hulk. I really love that Dan Slott run. Say whatever you will about Dan Slott. That was a great run. It was a lot of fun. He's killing on Fantastic Four right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I love that She-Hulk run. And it's one of the first comics that I read when I got into comics. Um, so I'm very much in love with that character. And especially like with us having conversations about Charlie Cox's Daredevil. Mm -hmm. And you've got, you know, Bruce Banner's definitely going to make plenty of appearances. There's a lot of talk about where this fits in the timeline because of his arm sling and him being in Hulk form or not in Hulk form. So this will be very interesting to see maybe what happened with him in those five years sure. between the snaps. Yeah. Uh, and um, then you get Mark Ruffalo coming back as the Hulk, which is nice to see him in one of these shows. I love Ruffalo so much. And reportedly, he is one of the nicest people to work with in the world. So, like, really, always like, give Ruffalo more Wouldn't you work. be shocked if you found out he wasn't? Yeah, I know. You'd be like, really? That guy? I'm so sure, though. And then you've got Jamila Jamil from uh, The, the Good, Good Place playing Titania, who is like a classic She-Hulk villain slash sometimes working together with her. And this sounds like it's going to just be enormous amounts of fun. I, I, I hope it is. And talk to... Uh, Tatiana Maslany at, with, in Orphan Black, you're like, the, she can do anything. She can play, play any character. So there's a lot to be excited about. Uh, I, I will admit that when I hear uh, legal comedy, I think back to not so much Ally McBeal, but the the failed Wonder Woman pilot where oh, that was how they yeah. sold it. When yeah. it was going to be like, oh, it's going to be like Ally McBeal. And it's like, uh, I feel like they, they're going to do it right this time. I feel like with her breaking the fourth wall as well and being a fourth wall breaking character, I wonder if there will be like a throwaway joke mm -hmm. about that. Yeah. Because I, that fits. Uh, yeah, I wonder because she has been treated by multiple writers as more of a comedic character mm -hmm. yeah. and this being a comedy and lots of, yes, you know, almost Deadpoolish like fourth wall breaking. Sure. But also one of the classic things for her to do in the comics when she has to be a lawyer is to be involved with the suit against another superhero. Uh, yeah. And I bet you anything that's where they're going with this and they're still be they're being standoffish about who that hero might be i know who it is i don't know who it is <laughs> but i think it's but i think it's eros i'm ready for oh, oh, uh, the love affair between the two of them. well not just the love affair but like i'm ready for them to have to actually properly have the conversation that they staged in the comics about mm. his powers yeah. and consent oh. um, that they actually didn't follow through on and made it this weird like rigmarole of like Thanos is puppeting some people. It was really stupid, the ending of that story. So I would really like to see that rewritten and, and better. Um, and I think that this, I think this casting and the sh like the attitude that they seem to have towards the show actually makes sort of a perfect space mm -hmm. to have that conversation Agreed. in the modern MCU. And I'm here for it. And also, if she wants to hook up with Harry Styles, I don't blame her because, like, <laughs> hey, he's Harry Styles. Yeah. <laughs> We get I Am Groot. Now, we don't really even know if this is going to be live action. It's going to be animated. We it's don't, animated. Almost, oh, yeah. did they say yeah. it was animated? Yeah. Okay. So, in the comics, there was a comic called I Am Groot, where Groot gets separated from the Guardians of the Galaxy by a wormhole, and he's left to, again, this is when he's tiny, baby Groot, and he's left on his own on an alien planet that literally no one's discovered before, filled with multiple different societies and different aliens, and he's got to work his way through all that. Nobody knows what this is going to be about, but Feige has said it's about him meeting a bunch of colorful new characters. Question mark? We don't know. I like Groot. I assume Vin Diesel will be back put through a voice filter so his rasp is a little more high-pitched. <laughs> does he just like spend like five minutes going, I am Groot, and they just copy it over? Like he does it in different ways, like like 12 different times, and they're like, all right, well, we can use this one here, and use this one here, and use this one Best here. Best voice actor gig ever. <laughs> like they, like they, he can't keep getting new checks <laughs> for that. But yeah, this uh, I am Groot, it's going to be a series of shorts. Yeah. Yeah. One thing that I thought was really interesting is somebody posited that the that sort of like terraforming superpower substance that they introduced in What If mm -hmm. could possibly be connected to what Groot is made out of or mm -hmm. what or his origin story. And I'm curious to see if that's true and if that uh, is something that the series explores. Okay, every, we can't see every show we're looking forward to, but I am looking forward to Ironheart. Uh, and she might be a character that you're not that familiar with, but I was heavy into Iron Man at the time, and when Tony Stark 
sort of died as he tends to do and his consciousness was elsewhere we had Riri Williams in Detroit who was a, a prodigy MIT at 14 years old and kind of built her own Iron Man armor to the point where Tony Stark while still alive said like hey I recognize you kid and I'm gonna give you the AI to make this suit real and he was in her as Jarvis is with him uh, as she tooled around and so here we have uh, Riri Williams who is going to first appear as Ironheart or maybe at, at least the character Riri Williams will be in Wakanda uh, forever uh, you know Black Panther 2 right. which is uh, you know this will be a character much like the Williams sisters who will inspire many young uh, girls of color uh, I'm super excited about this show because there's so much they can do uh, they kind of ruined her comic, her costume in the comics, so here's a chance to make it super cool again. Uh, it's going to be played by Dominic Thorne, who was previously in Judas and the Black Messiah, and in even um, if Bill Street could talk. Uh, does, is there a release date for this? No, there's no strict release date other than obviously after Black Panther two. Sure, sure. But yeah, I think I'm, I love her character in the comics. If I'm not mistaken. They, all right, so Marvel always puts out their list. I don't know why they do this. I mean, mm -hmm. he calculates it, but of who are the smartest characters in the Marvel Universe. Right, right. And the last time they did it, she was the number one smartest character in the Marvel Universe. Was she? Because a lot of times they make it uh, Moon Girl. Yeah. No, it was her in this case. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I was like, okay. really? All right. But they're all in. Marvel's all in on the younger characters, the new characters of color, which leads to a lot of like, is Young Avengers coming? Because I think Young Avengers is coming. Well, you know, the thing you have to admire about the MCU is that these characters came out. They had a wave of younger characters who were, you know, different races, different sexual orientations, all, all, all kinds of things. And uh, even like, you know, that when you had the, a female Thor, uh, and then they got a bunch of, you know, quote unquote blowback on it for, oh, everything's getting too woke and, and where's my real characters? And in the comics, they kind of caved. They had a good thing going. They could have stuck it out. They kind of caved. Well, it's it's. I'm happy to see that the MCU is going like, nope, we got Disney money, mm. so we're going to go forward with this. We, we have a mission, and they're accomplishing it. So lastly, we have Secret Invasion, which of course is one of the going to be one of the big shows for them because it was one of the biggest, most epic, most game-changing Marvel events in comics. I mean, we're back in the days when Martin and I were on a show uh, called League of Extremely Ordinary Gentlemen mm -hmm. on Spill.com. We talked about it pretty much every week as it was going on, and, uh, like a lot. Well, <laughs> plus it came so into it fit right into Civil War, like before Civil War had quite ended. And you thought you had the exclamation point on it. It was like, ah, but Secret Invasion, though. Who in this war was even uh, uh, who they said they were? And here we're getting Samuel Jackson returning, of course, as Nick Fury, and Ben Mendelsohn re returning as Talos, the friendly scroll, the scroll we like. <laughs> the scrolls. Like, oh, you're one of the good you're ones. You're one of the good ones, yeah. <laughs> But there is no introduction really of bad scrolls at this point in the universe. So far, we're like, no, it's the Kree who are bad, which, to be fair, even in the comics, the Kree are, in fact, yeah, most yeah, of them yeah, no, pretty bad. No, it's, it's a race of dicks. Right. But now, they've, they've, Feige has said with this live action six episode series that, yes, there have been scrolls who've been here for a while, slowly integrating themselves into society. And I suspect it's going to be kind of about, oh, there are different splinters of the scroll sure. civilization, which there are as well in the comics. So I like that, and I suspect that this is going to be one of the last coming out of these series that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I suspect, yeah, because like there's a lot of stuff that has to build up to this, and mm -hmm. I think there's going to be a little bit of a clue and something else early on suggesting the existence of like hidden scrolls. I bet you anything in either one of the movies or one of the shows we're going to see somebody die and then they turn into a scroll and they're like, "What the hell? What is that thing?" Guarantee it. So I hope, much like the comic books, we're going to be getting a lot of. Wait, so a character we're already familiar with has been a scroll for a while, and people have already been speculating about this even before they announced the, officially this show. But here's the question which scrolls were Hydra agents? <laughs> that would make them double, double agents. Double, they, even they're confused, <laughs> yeah. right? I don't know. But uh, Olivia Coleman is going to be in this as well, which, you know, she's a big, big get right now. Oh, and I am absolutely. super excited about her being in this. This is the one out of all of these I'm most excited for because it was one of my favorite Marvel event runs. I love the scrolls. I'm a big fan. That's one of the th reasons I think I like Captain Marvel more than a lot of people because I'm like, oh my God, I love the scrolls so much. And mm. we finally get the scrolls. And he's a nice scroll and I want to <laughs> hug him and I want to plush Was, was not prepared for him to be a nice scroll, no. gotta say. No. Do you think that we've already seen scrolls in the MCU? Oh, absolutely. I think we absolutely have. Who do you think is a scroll? 
Ooh. Well, they could be pulling the way that they did in the comics where a character who died... Yeah. Turns out they were not, in fact, dead, but that was a skull replacement, mm -hmm. and that that character has been sitting on board like in hyperstasis on a scroll ship somewhere. I wouldn't be surprised if that someone who they choose to bring back mm -hmm. might be that way. I know some people were suggesting, oh, I don't know, maybe it's Black Widow, maybe it's... Yeah, it's you know, then now the lawsuit is settled, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't count anybody out. <laughs> but that is going to be it for this week's crossover event. Thanks for watching and listening. You can see Martin over at Double Toasted. Thank you. You can see Danny right here at Bell of Lost Souls. And you can see me at oneofus.net. And if you go to oneofus.net and become a subscriber at the $5 level or above, you get access to bonus material for this show, which we do every single week after the episode with like a whole different thing. And this week we're going to be talking about what else are we watching and super crazy excited about right now, which I, oh man, I'm really dying to talk about this thing. I'm so, <laughs> haven't got to talk about it anywhere, so Fine. I'm just really Fine. thrilled. I'll let you talk about it. <laughs>